What's the 2023 tournament bass fishing schedule look like and the trail? That's what we're going to talk about in this video. From Major League Fishing to the Bass Masters to a very little bit of NPFL. But we're going to talk about where all three tournaments go, what we should look forward to, what's happening, and just some of the rumors that are going around in the industry at this time in January, just the beginning of the year of 2023. We have to start with the biggest and what I think is the best for a majority of the people, the Bassmaster Elite Series. This is a really good year for the elites. There's people, uh, new people coming back in like Bradley Hallman, people like um, David Fritz and Larry Nixon who are using their legendary exemption to get back in and then also anglers like Keith Poche who's coming back to join the elites, which will only help solidify and make sure that they are some of the best. While I'm not really a big fan of the legendaries exemption, while I'm not, and I'm, this isn't, uh, you know, throwing shade on Fitz or, or Nixon, I just don't think that, I don't think that you should have to use that thing. I think that if you have to use it, there's a reason why. And, and if you haven't requalified, there's a reason why you need to use that legendary exemption. Excluding that, Bassmaster Elites is still the king. They, three years ago when everyone left for Major League Fishing, or four years ago when they left for Major League Fishing, everyone thought this was, the, a lot of us thought that this was the death of Bassmaster. While they incorporated a lot of new anglers, really what's really helped make Bassmaster still the best is that some of those anglers that left for Major League Fishing came back. People like Brandon Palinick, who won Angler of the Year last year, were coming back really helps it. Greg Hackney, Gerald Swindle, some of these anglers that came back from Major League Fishing to join the elites really makes the elites one or the best in terms of really when it comes to the fans' perspective. Even in their website statistics, Bassmaster is still the best. Bassmaster gets the most views. They have the lowest bounce rate. They have the probably the most time that an angler spends on that website. And these stats show what I'm talking about. To have these stats in the in the middle or the end of 2022 is fantastic. When you look at that views and then you look at that bounce rate, it is phenomenal as a website. This is just stuff that I can find and isn't really the be all end all that's the definite, but this is where unique visitors come. And really that's the, the key to fishing. The key to websites is the unique visitors. People can come once and come back and back and back and bots can help boost uh, a website's overall views. But in this case, this is stuff that Google Analytics looks at and that's why Bassmaster's still the best. There's 104 anglers going into the 2023 season of the Bassmaster Elites. And they have some great places they're going. To be honest, the first few places that the tournaments are set up, they are gonna have some serious opportunity to catch some giant fish. So going into this 2023 season, my biggest question is, can Brandon Palinick back-to-back -back Angler of the Years on the Bassmaster Elites? In my opinion, I believe he can. I think Brandon is unbelievably consistent. He's just a fantastic angler. And no offense to a lot of the other anglers, there's a group of probably 10 or 12, 15 anglers that are just exceptional on the elites. I think Brandon's in that upper echelon of those anglers. I think there's always tiers in terms of sports. You get your LeBrons and your Michael Jordans, then you get your role players that are just really good people. That not they they might be starters, but they're not that upper echelon. And I think Brandon Palinick is one of those guys. I think Palinick can easily do real well. I think the Johnston brothers can do well. I think um, Patrick Walters is an absolute fantastic angler. But those guys are the ones pushing Brandon to be the 2023 Angler of the Year. And while it's a feat that's rarely ever done, back-to-back -back Angler of the Year championships for Brandon could really happen. I really do think he's the odds-on favorite right now to win back-to-back. -back. So while the Bassmaster Elite Field is set and has a great schedule, I think the one thing that I'm really looking forward to in 2023 for the Bassmaster Group is the Opens. And the Opens are going to be, again, probably the hardest field out there. 
I think that you have people like Bobby Lane that's coming back and Ish Monroe. And there's a lot of really talented anglers trying to compete for nine spots that move into the elites for next year. People like Bobby Lane want to make the classic. So if you win one of the open championships, you get the, to get to go to a classic. But you have to pay or you have to compete in all nine tournaments. And those nine tournaments that are the opens are absolutely stacked with unreal anglers. So much so, 170 people have, have are in all, through, all nine events of the tournaments of the Bassmaster Opens where in general you could win three in a group like the South or the Central or the North and get a bid into the elites. It isn't that way this year. You have to compete in all nine events. And those top nine anglers, some might drop down if there's a elite angler, the top ones that aren't qualified will get to get their bid into the elites. And that 170 field, like again, I said, is stacked. And it is the main reason why Bass is still king, why Bassmaster is is still the king. They have these anglers that really want to compete, go all over the country, and then compete for only nine spots. And that is unreal to me. Now we head into our fifth season of the Bass Pro Tour. I don't even know where the where the time has went. I remember going to the first series in, here in Toho and just going, can't believe what was happening. All, all that all the, the transitions and changes that had happened in the in the tournament fishing industry that summer. And here we are into our fifth season of Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour. And it is still, they're still growing. The one thing Major League Fishing has over bass is they have all these other tournament schedules like the Tackle Warehouse and the Toyota Series and all these other tournaments that are consistently going on nonstop throughout the year. Anglers are trying to compete there to get into the Invitationals. And the Invitationals for the Major League Fishing are where really some of the best anglers are again. While Major League Fishing Bass Pro Tour, those guys are just very well named anglers. Your Jacob Wheelers, your Jordan Lees, your KVDs. The Invitationals are really exceptional also. That second tier of anglers is really unbelievable for Bass Pro Tour. I would say to the people at Bass, Bass Pro Tour is you need to stick to what is right. Um, and I'll bring this up when I start talking about MPFL. The constant changes of the scoring system and other things are confusing to anglers. In the past, they've always had every fish counts over a certain weight. This year, they're going with the five heaviest fish. And they're doing it because anglers wanted it and so did the fans. Fans were talking about how it was very confusing or you know, you get on a school of fish that are one or two pounds and you can just beat up that school. There were never really targeting giant fish in Major League Fishing. That's where I think they lost some of the fan support. But the anglers and the fans said, look, go to the five heaviest. They're still going to catch photo release. And if they want the fan support, they have to get the fans involved in the sport. And that's what they need to do. Because Bass is the king of bringing those fish across the stage and getting excited and not knowing where they're at at that point in time. There's a lot more drama that happens and some anglers get into that are lower, get into that top, and it really adds excitement to the tournament of tournament fishing. Where Major League Fishing, you know what's going on because it's it's really live scoring. It hap as it happens, you're able to see it. Does it make it not as interesting? I don't know, in my opinion, when it gets down to the last 30 minutes, and knowing where the cut line is, that's where things get really fun. I actually enjoy watching the cut line more than I enjoy watching who's winning. Because if you're way ahead, I know you're going to win. It's it's just inevitable. But that cut line is really fun to watch. So while Major League Fishing needs to, I believe they need to stop with the scoring changes and do all those things and just set to one thing, Major League Fishing is still doing very well with having the tournament angler enjoy what's going on. And their website statistics show it. While they don't have the amount of page views for as bass, they do have a significant amount of people that go to their website every month. Almost half a million, which is a lot from, from what I can see. Now again, I don't know if the stats are really 100% accurate, but you can gauge where they're at by what these stats show. These are stats that Google Analytics has done and other people are tracking. Now I track these stats every month. I like to see where people, where the 
where people are going and why. And while there's sometimes major league fishing does end up catching up to bass, bass is consistently, bass master is consistently the best one out there. What I like about what's happening in in major league fishing is that they're willing to, while I don't like the constant changes, they are willing to to make some changes to try to make people enjoy the, the tournaments more. But my biggest question is, is can Jacob Wheeler go back to back to back and make three Angler of the Year championships on the Bass Pro Tour? I don't think there's anyone out there that's knocking him off. Jacob Wheeler is the best angler on the planet. There's, I know there's a lot of great anglers. Like D J Dustin Connell last year was the biggest surprise for me on the Major League Fishing. Dustin won two tournaments, and Dustin could compete for that AOI championship. But you want to know Jacob is just unbelievably consistent. But to go back to back to back, three, three P is really a challenge when you have those anglers on Major League Fishing. We're not just talking about Jordan Lees or Edwin Evers or Atta Foe or Kevin Van Dam or Dustin Connell or all those guys that really just have been killing it lately. Jacob Wheeler is really up there. I would love to see Jacob Wheeler and Brandon Palinick go one on one and see who's the best angler over a four day tournament on a place that they didn't know because I think that would bring some ratings in. And I think when you put the best against the best, it can only add to the fire of Major League Fishing versus Bassmaster. And finally, while they are now changed their scoring, not their scoring, their payouts, National Professional Fishing League or the league is back for their third season. Um, there's not a really lot of t a lot to talk about the NPFL, unfortunately. Uh, when I record this, this is on the 7th of January. They just don't have a lot of anglers signed up. I, I've been told that there's less than 65 anglers signed up for the 2023 season, and they're just 45 days away from doing it, where the Opens already have 170 people that are paid and are competing in all nine tournaments. It doesn't say much for what MPFL is doing. And the, really their statistics on their website and their views are just, they're awful. They're almost disgustingly awful. Um, I think they've made a lot of mistakes. Where I think they've gone right is increasing this payout to $100,000 uh, per tournament for the winner. I don't know if they'll be able to accomplish that if they don't get enough anglers getting in this into the series. And I would be really scared about what's happening. Uh, I think the biggest question for MPFL this year is, are they going to succeed? I mean, we kind of questioned it a few years ago, but now we're seeing or hearing that there's not enough anglers joining them. A lot of anglers are leaving. Um, and I think that's because there's been a lot of uh, subtle little tiny controversies that have happened. I mean, if you could have paid people $100,000 to win the tournament the last two years, I think you would have been ahead of the game. But it was always $50,000. And there were a lot of anglers that just lost their ass fishing this league. I'm not taking any shots at them or be throwing shade on them at all. I think that trying to start a, a tournament series is a lot harder than we ever will imagine. I don't think we will ever realize the amount of work and time that goes into making a, a tournament series work. While I've gotten some new blood with one of the anglers pu putting money in to help start things up not having a championship for the two sheet two first years hurt them and then last but not least the statistics on the website are atrocious atrocious now i'm not saying this is um the correct stats but if 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 i'm judging all of them all the three leagues by using one platform to say statistics the one major league uh, the one for mpfl is it's awful it's it's really it's pitiful. There's statistics on YouTube uh, with getting 60,000 YouTube views on all the videos that they put out last year is kind of pretty bad too. I think I could get them 500,000 views in a year on YouTube, but I'm not one of their employees. And let me just throw this in here. I know that there's a bunch of anglers that are just waiting to see what's going to happen with NPFL before they sign up, like 100 plus. But as of recording this, there just isn't a lot of people that have signed up for the 2023 season. And they're only 50 days away from the first tournament. So the MPFL, while I would love to tell you where they're going to go, just like in every other angler, nobody knows when the tournaments are or when the, where they are. 
That's the biggest flaw I have in, in NPFL. As someone who covers and watches all of fishing, I never know when their tournaments are or when or where they are. It's the biggest flaw in NPFL. Last year I did a poll and I think there were 2% knew that NPFL was going on. 2% of the people that voted. So while I'd love to say I know what's going on with NPFL, I don't. I don't know. And neither do you, unless you're working for NPFL or you're on or you're one of the anglers on NPFL. If you know it, then you know it. If you don't, I mean, it's just what it is. And until they can change the situation and the dynamics and how they do things and get information out to other people, then there's still just going to be the bottom barrel. So we've talked about the Bassmasters, Elites, and the Opens, the Major League Fishing, the Invitationals, the Heavy Hitters, that's going to happen, all that good stuff. Where are all those 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 tournament trails are going this year. How, who's some of the, the little highlights? Because really the elites with those two exemption sponsors and yet Bradley Hallman and other people getting back into the into the elites is really kind of cool. The, nine, the anglers that are moved out of the invitations into the Bass Pro Tour with Major League Fishing is kind of nice too. I like to see, I kind of enjoy seeing, no offense if you're the bottom nine or 10, you, I don't believe you should be in the, in the elites or the Major League Fishing. Bring some of those new guys up. We'll see really how the the heavy, the big guys do. And really, the one other question, now that I'm sitting here thinking and talking to the camera, what happens with Mike Iaconelli? Can he get into that top 70? Because he really was really close of not, of really being horrible last year. Iaconelli, I think that was the biggest surprise to me, especially after qualifying, to not do well in the elites. I don't know if his his mentality has changed or something has changed in the way that he fishes, but it'll be fun to see where Ike and Ellie finish too. And can Swindle and Patrick Walters, the Johnston brothers, Lee Livesey, all these guys, can they beat Brandon Palinak on the leads? And can anyone knock off Jacob Wheeler? I don't think so. Okay, thanks for hitting that like and subscribe button. If you have a comment, I'd love to hear it. If I've made mistakes, I apologize. I'm not perfect. Leave a comment below and tell me what you think. Remember, take a kid fishing, get your fish on. I'll see y'all soon. Cheers.